Well, good evening. We're back again. You thought you had gotten rid of me, but guess what? You know me, I always persevere. So here I am, I'm back, and I have the amazing Mavis Creer, mental health advocate here in the studio with me tonight. And she is going to be talking about some mental health issues and helping to heighten your awareness related to these issues. Mavis, good evening, and how are you? Good evening, Miss Constance. Thank you so much for having me on today. Um, it's truly been a challenge to my mental health getting in, but it is all good. It's all great. And I'm thankful to be with the audience on tonight. Well, thank you so much for coming. So Mavis, just tell the audience a little bit about you and how you became a mental health advocate. Um, well, currently I serve as Executive Director with Recovery Rebuild Restore Southeast Mississippi, R3SM, um, and we help rebuild communities following disaster. And one of the things that I recognized was that when we were going into those communities, it wasn't just houses that needed to be rebuilt, but the magnitude of those disasters on the families and communities had a lasting effect. A lot of time we were just thinking about rebuilding the home, but what about rebuilding the people and the trauma that they go go through, um, the things that they have to cope and deal with that's exasperated by the disaster. So I look at um, mental health advocacy is rebuilding uh, the whole person or either walking alongside them along their journey for their mental and emotional well-being. Great, great. And so how long have you worked in the mental health environment? Oh, well, my background is in psychology, but I wasn't really dealing with it uh, as much until a few years ago, um, probably when I got involved with NAMI, that's the National Alliance of Mental Illness, um, for the sitting on the board with the state and also locally in the Pine Belt. Um, it really opened my eyes as far as what was needed and also the gaps and resources um, and just education, especially um, in, in communities that really need it the most, um, where people are suffering and hurting um, and they really don't know which way to turn. Great, great. And so you mentioned that when you were looking at the housing needs, that you also saw the mental health needs. And I can identify that, you know, going through Hurricane Katrina, you know, so many people experienced some devastation and lost. A lot of people didn't realize that they had mental health issues. And I remember my dad saying the same thing. He went to a meeting one day and they were talking about it. He had no clue that he had a mental health issue mm -hmm. related to the devastation of the storm. And so you're right. There's a need there for different reasons. And so your organization, what are some of the things that you provide? Um, well, through NAMI, um, we provide um, courses. Um, I think one of them that just is getting ready to start is a veterans course specifically for veterans and military service uh, individuals and their families as far as support. Um, because one thing that has been recognized throughout the nation is that more um, people who are serving in the military do have mental uh, health challenges and struggles. Um, the rates for suicide for those who are either coming out of the military or, or in the military has increased dramatically. I actually did a project on that, a research project actually last, uh, last year, at the end of last year, about mental health and veterans. And it was astonishing to see the number of, of those serving and those who have um, retired out of the military who have different symptoms of mental illness. And oftentimes it is really kind of pushed under the rug or either they're, um, they feel ashamed about that. So that's one of the things that we are working on um, for all of the population um, is to not feel ashamed, to not feel like they have to hide behind, you know, a face. I was speaking to a group the other day um, at a, a homeless, a more so homeless community and people who are transient about mental health. So we even do go out to, you know, where meet them, meet people where they are um, to try to get them resources as well as far as with groups and also classes and presentations about living with mental illness. That's one of, it's called In Your Own Boys. That's one of the ones that I actually present for about going through different mental health challenges, um, coping skills, 
you know, knowing that it's okay not to be okay, but also letting people understand that it's not a quick fix when it comes to mental health. Um, it's not like you can put on a different pair of shoes and you're okay, or you put on a, a dress. I think, you know, some of the people in the past when they were, um, talking about make yourself feel better, they will say, go have a glass of wine and get you a new dress. And you're going to be okay. But what, what happens when that is not true and not accurate? Um, and, and for so long, I think really, especially people who were in certain um, categories or certain social circles, it really was frowned upon to be seen as weak. Um, you know, I even talk about people who are in leadership when it comes to mental health and in uh, positions of power. And they're, you know, often seen like myself and yourself are often seen like we are so, res always have to be resilient, always have to be strong, always have to be, um, you know, the bigger person in every situation. But what happens with even people who are posi in positions of power and leadership are having challenges when, with their mental health? And that's one of the things that I was recently speak speaking about, that everybody, you know, has the potential to go through challenges emotionally, mentally, um, psychologically. And if you do, you know, see those symptoms, then please seek help, please get support. And there is resources out there. And I agree with that. You know, from a leadership perspective, you're right. We're expected to be the one, the stronger ones and always resilient. But I do wellness checks on my coworkers and those that I lead, letting them know that, hey, it's okay not to be okay. Today may not be your day. Today, you may yeah. not be on your A game, and that is okay. Take some time for yourself, and I encourage everyone, take some time for that self-care through prayer, meditation, whatever works for you. Take that time. Now, in your experiences, have you seen or noticed that there is a stigma related to mental illness, and how do we overcome that? It is. It's funny. I was doing some more research actually earlier today about um, stigmas with mental health in the church and in congregations. Um, so even, you know, if you are a more traditional family or more traditional denominations, it has been some changes uh, throughout our nation. But there are still stigmas when it comes to mental health. You know, even maybe 20 or 30 years ago, even parents were stigmatized if their children had mental health challenges. Um, they were, you know, sometimes ostracized because, you know, some people might have felt like that they weren't parenting them correctly. And that's why their child was acting out or having issues mentally. Um, and so that's just interesting how the times are changing, but they're still in certain pockets of communities in certain parts of our society it is still a stigma when it comes to mental health it is um you know like that red it's on your your forehead not like superman um but that's what we like to say you know we all ha are superheroes in our own way and if you're speaking up and 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 doing your part and, and trying to let people know that hey that it's okay then you do have superheroes um one of the the things i think last year for our walk with nami was um you know shining light on people who were doing service um because of the many stretches that they had like people who are in the medical field like yourself um first responders um even teachers and how even all of those people especially during the pandemic, um, mental health was really challenged on a whole nother level that I don't think we have seen before in a very long time in our society. So even removing that stigma from people who are in the medical field, for nurses, for doctors, uh, for teachers who say that they, you know, they're at the end of their rope and they don't know what to do and they're counting down the days to the end of the semester. Um, and how can we support them and for them to be able to speak up and feel like their jobs won't be in question, um, that their positions won't be um, jeopardized if they speak up and that they won't get a stigma, you know, around the office with people calling them um, crazy or unfit because they need to take a mental health day or a break. Um, so there are some changes, but there, you know, in certain pockets of communities in certain situations in business and in leadership um, and even in, you know, in certain churches, it's still a stigma when it comes to mental health. 
Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And you know, I, I think about the nurses at the bedside every day that leave home in fear because they're going to take care of COVID patients. And you know, they're afraid that they may contract the disease or they may bring it home to their families. I think about their mental well-being a lot because they're providing care from a courageous point of view. They're caring with courage. They're, they're being courageous. They're leaving their homes every day and they're going on the front lines and they're caring for these patients that are ill and that need their help. And so we need to provide some awareness to them and some counseling and some guidance for them as well because they need it. Because they're going through this every day and this is real to them and as they, as they see patients die. You know, that can be very devastating just to see patients that you care for and then they die and you just go through a sense of helplessness. So what are your recommendations for those nurses? Um, I would recommend, you know, even having, you know, just like you go to see your regular doctor um, or a, a physical doctor to have regular checkups when it comes to mental health, even if it's quarterly, even if you don't feel like there is a lot of extra stress. One thing that I know and that I've realized is sometimes you don't realize how much stress you're under and the emotional and psychological impact until you're out of the situation, until you um, see it from a different angle. And so when you're in it and dealing with, you know, and there have been a lot of studies, you know, about this, when you're, you know, in undue stress, you know, have high levels of trauma, um, a lot of time you just are on autopilot. You're going so much and you just are pushing and pushing and pushing. And you don't realize until after the fact that what was really impacted that you have not been taking care of your body physically, that your mind gets to the point when you're on autopilot so much and you've been through and dealing with so much trauma. It's like your mind and your brain a lot of times have a hard time shutting down. That's why, you know, they've even did certain studies about, you know, with people, especially in this generation, they are addicted or, you know, to social media and constantly having to input, you know, having constant input. And that's one of the symptoms of trying to avoid your reality. When you constantly have to be plugged into something, you know, either it being online shows and everything to the point where you cannot physically shed everything mm -hmm. down and just deal with the reality at hand. That's a symptom that you are overwhelmed when you can't shut down. Wow. 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 That's interesting. And you know, I don't think a lot of people are aware of that. And so that's why I want to have this podcast this month to heighten that awareness because mental illness is real. And we may be feeling a certain way at times and we don't understand that maybe we're going through a mental health crisis. And we don't, we don't, even as healthcare providers, we're so busy taking care of everybody else. We don't realize that, hey, we're going through the struggle as well. So I thank you so, so much for sharing that. Now tell us what's going on with NAMI in the upcoming months. Yes, with NAMI, um, I'm so very glad. There are classes and I'm thankful because, you know, the pandemic, was very hard on a lot of people and still is. But one thing that it did, you know, a ray of sunshine was that it opened up opportunities as far as resources virtually. So, you know, the classes, the presentations, um, I've even, you know, presented to um, people as far as Canada, you know, and other, other places, you know, sometimes internationally talking about mental health. Um, just here in Mississippi, so it's uh, fully confidential when it comes to the support groups and the classes. And so some of them are the peer to peer for people who are living with mental health um, issues or, you know, challenges. And so they're among their peers. Another one that I just got trained for was a family and friends, because one of the things that that a lot of people do not realize the amount of teenagers who have been impacted with mental health challenges during the pandemic has increased dramatically. 
Um, so what do you do as far as a parent or a caregiver when you're dealing with your youth who is uh, dealing with mental uh, mental illness? Um, so that's a group, you know, it's completely confidential just as far as uh, tools, um, coping mechanisms, and also ways for them not to beat themselves up and to understand that they are not by themselves in this journey and also not to try to make their their child feel bad for what they're going through because it is a chemical imbalance it is you know like i said before just like with us we have a breaking point where we can only take so much and that's with anybody just because they're younger doesn't mean that they can't experience challenges and don't have different emotions going on and i think for so long especially in our culture we just thought that children were little robots they can sit in the classroom for eight hours you know people can talk to them in a kind of way um all kind of different things that culturally may have been allowed for so long that we just think it's okay and normal and they just supposed to deal with everything on top of you know that and that's not the case so even classes for family and friends to dealing with youth or you know their family members that are going through mental illness um you know one of the things that really touched me and impacted me was a, a man who had gone through rehab and he you know I, I gave the class the other day and i just thought you know it would be the same kind of class but he said well i won't help I'm trying to get back on my medicine. He, he said, I know it, it helps me with what I'm going through. And he just said, I, I can't afford my medicine. Um, can you can you tell me how I can can get back on my medicine? Um, and that just really impacted me because that's something also too that a lot of the NAMI affiliates do assist with is medicine. If people do need um need to get back on medicine and also to try to lead them um to you know to healthcare providers if they do not have insurance or do not know um who to go to when it comes to that part of it, that is another benefit um of NIME. So we don't provide direct uh services, but we do provide support and also to try to point them in the right direction, um, kind of like an umbrella agency. Um or a table where it's discussion. Also, one of the other benefits, or as far as what NAMI is, <laughs> legislative, legislative um, advocacy for mental health. Um, so that's one of the things that a lot of people do not realize. Um, even locally, up until a few years ago, the youth, um, when they were held at the detention center, they were in the same uh, facility as adults in mixed population. Um, if they had a mental health uh, issue. So you can just imagine if you're 14 or 15 or something like that and you have a um, psychological break or you have a mental health challenge and you're put into a facility, you know, maybe for a couple of days with uh, grown men, you know, in a facility. And what that what that must be like and how scary that that w was for a, a youth. So through different advocacy uh, actions that were taken um, with the help of some people with NAMI and also in the judicial system, that has been changed in our area. But there's other um, counties throughout the state of Mississippi where there is not a separation with population with children who are having mental health crises. Um, so that is not uncommon that, you know, so even things along that line that you might not think about the advocacy when it comes to mental health, that's important. So that's why we want as many people to know the services that are available, but also to be aware of the situation, especially for um, vulnerable populations that are dealing with mental health issues. Um, so so we can speak up, so we can be a voice, and so we can let them know that they are not alone um, where they are. Okay, so tell us about the upcoming conference that NAMI is having next month. Yes, the conference um, that is coming up, our state conference, it is going to be a jam-packed, uh, yes. high-impact with internationally renowned speakers with NAMI Mississippi, and we're speaking with one of the presenters, Miss Constance Willard. 
and we're very excited to have her um, on the conference. But it's uh, speakers from all across the United States that will be there. Um, it's going to be from May 18th to the 20th, and you can register mm -hmm. now for a very minimal uh, minimal fee and just think about all of the, the monies that are raised from the registration, go back into the services for the community. Um, so it's gonna be over 25 speakers um, during those days. So it's gonna be jam packed and you have the option to receive CEs um, if you're for a social worker or general CEs as well. So uh, anybody who's in the professional field, who's trying to learn and gain, but also for people who may not be directly in social work or in a, uh, in a medical profession, it is still beneficial if you have a desire to advocate and be a voice for those living with mental health uh, challenges. Because once again, you know, it could be you or anybody you know that might be going through. And it's, it's so much that you can learn just from listening. And we're pulling them together all under one roof. And, you know, unlike, you know, many of the other conferences who are that are going back uh, in person, this is going to be fully virtual. So you can tune in from anywhere and register um, all day, all day for for those days. And so it's, it's going to be a really, really interesting and um NAMI Mississippi.org. You can see the presenters and also the topics um, and objectives as well. So it's a full schedule and we would love to have you. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to presenting and being a part of it. Um, I support NAMI. We do the NAMI walks at work every year. And so we get involved with the uh, with the patients and get them out walking. And it's really very rewarding. So I'm looking forward to being there and presenting. So thank you so much. If, if someone wants to contact you, Mavis, how can they find you? Um, they can find me online. Of course, I am Mavis A. Career on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Um, I'm very thankful for being here on the show. Also, if you want specific resources when it comes to mental health, NAMIMississippi.org, and they will send the information to our affiliate if you are in our area. But there are affiliates all throughout Mississippi and all throughout the nation. So if you're looking at us and say, hey, I wonder... Do we have one? You can go to NAMI.org NAMI and it have a list of the different affiliates. It's an affiliate um, per state um, that you can connect with. And hey, if you say there's a you're in an area in a state that doesn't have any NAMI affiliates, it's a really simple process that's already broken down how you can start, start an affiliate. Um, and it's not complicated. It just have to be a few people who have an interest um, to serve and to learn and support those who are in need. Well, we thank you so much, Mavis, for sharing your knowledge and your wisdom with us tonight and dropping the nuggets that you have dropped tonight. Again, this is the Speak Easy podcast. This is your safety zone for you to come on Sunday evenings and wind down, or if you need to, wind down. We're here every Sunday, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So come out, join us. May is dedicated to mental health awareness. Next Sunday, we will have another expert providing some information and some resources. So I invite you and encourage you to tune in next Sunday for another Speakeasy event. Thank you so much and have a good night to each of you. Awesome. Bye.